Severe MMA here with Ben Forsyth, who fights at Bama 30 in uh, the Three Arena in Dublin next month. Uh, tell us a little bit about your opponent and uh, what you know about him. Um, yeah, so Matt Clemper, he's a guy from the UK. Um, I got, first of all, I was given the wrong name, and uh, I thought it was a debut guy, but this guy's actually, uh, he was a heavyweight, he's 1-0. Uh, he finished the first guy. Uh, but to be honest, I don't know too much about him. I know that's kind of a cliche for SPG, but um, my uh, I've overanalyzed my past two opponents, and I've had the worst performances of, of, of my career, I would say. Um, I say analysis is paralysis, and that kind of happened to me in the last two fights. I was kind of waiting for waiting for them to do stuff instead of acting, doing what I normally do, and uh, it led to having the two, I would say, worst performances of, of my career. So now the plan is go back to, don't reinvent the wheel, go back to where I was and just do what I do and don't even worry too much about them. But I know he's, I know he's one and oh, I know he's English, and that's about it. You started your career uh, at Pro 2-0. Uh, I think it was Ice and Bama, and then you went over to Brave to fight your next two. Was there anything about the travel or anything like that that affected you, or was it just uh, other factors? Um, again, I think it was just that I was oh, I, I was like, right, now it's time to get serious. This is a big show. Let's analyze my opponents. And then we'd spend, myself and Will and Tommy and stuff would, would set, spend time literally breaking down video and saying he does this, and he's good at this, and drilling off this, and drilling off that. And I found when it came to the fights, I was just waiting for them to do something. And then when they did something different, I was a bit shocked and I, and I try and adjust to that. And, you know, I found a really, like to be honest, the arenas and stuff, they are huge arenas and stuff over there. And, and it's, a, it's it's like a big, big show and it's big money, like, and it's, uh, but I don't think that was a factor really. Even the heat wasn't too much of a factor because the air conditioning is so good over there. Um, I, I really think it was just uh, me getting into my own head. You know? For a guy of your size, it's usually hard for it to get training partners to get fights. How much of a help is it to have a uh, guy you fought at amateur, Will fucking Fleury, or raw bastard uh, Will Fleury, uh, training with you the, the whole time? Yeah, uh, me and Will are, are super close now. It's actually, he, he's a blessing uh, in disguise, kind of, you know, because, um, but uh, he is now my main training partner, like literally. Uh, he beats the shit out of me every day. I, I try and reciprocate as much as I can. Uh, but like you said, he's a raw bastard, so uh, he generally uh, doesn't let me do that. He's fierce competitive. He gets real salty when you beat him on anything. So, um, but look, he, yeah, it's great to have him. And we have some other huge guys now, like George, Big George, who's fighting at Bama as well. Um, I'm glad you're not filming rounds with him because it's fucking embarrassing. But um, no, but it's good. Like iron sharpens sharpens iron, and uh, I'm getting like got some good guys, Claudio Conti and stuff as well, Paul Bourne. Um, we've actually got a really solid group of of big lads. Uh, but Will is definitely a big help. He'll uh, enjoy hearing that. Um, you had an extensive amateur career, including uh, winning the IMMAF 2015 European Championships. Uh, what was the experience like going over and fighting uh, repeatedly uh, every couple of days in, en route to winning that goal? Yeah. For me, um, that was I, uh, I'd lost a few fights. Uh, I think I'd lost three fights. Some people say four, but I think I bet Glenn Irvin. And uh, I tell him that every time I see him. Um, that's what happens when you fight up north, you don't finish them. But um, so I, I was kind of tr trying to prove a point to myself more than anything. I don't really care too much about what other people think. I, um, but I was really trying to pr prove a point to myself. Um, it was I it was a great experience, but very mentally challenging fighting that often. And I, I was in a room by myself, and then every day I'd fight and I'd go home and just be in the room, just in my own head, watching videos and listening to music and stuff, and just saying, you know, you can do this and keep going. It was pretty tough, uh, but it proved to me that was the kind of point where I went, all right, I can do this, you know. Having been 2-0 uh, undefeated and now being 2-2, two two, do you notice any of the, the hype dying down or the fans? or Do you notice any difference in the reaction to you? Um, a little bit like, um, yeah, there's less people kind of uh, ringing your phone or, or, or messaging you and stuff for interviews and all that. Not to no, not, not until you use, but uh, some other people, you know. Um, I do notice it, but to be honest, um, fuck them, you know. Like, I don't really, I, I know where I'm going to be. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I asked you for to do this interview is because, like, I just want to let people know I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm I'm gonna be at the top of this. I don't don't care how long it takes me. Uh, like, I can I might get more losses. I might get a load of wins. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm not going anywhere. So um, the hype can build or whatever or cannot build. I don't I don't really care. I'm just gonna focus on being the best martial artist I can. And I think if you keep making the correct choices, the wins will come. You know, so I'm I'm not afraid to incur a few losses on the way. And like I said to you before the interview, I think I'm the kind of guy who just does it the hard way. Um, but uh, I like it, you know. Uh, have you watched back the, your two losses and what do you take uh, 
technique or, or fighting wise that you've worked on that you're looking to improve close the holes in your game on so the first fight I lost uh, essentially I, I, I believe because um, of my jiu jitsu the guy just uh, was really good actually he was he was touted to be on I think he was on the Olympic wrestling team for America or something. he was nearly on or something like that he's left to do MMA but if you actually count the takedowns in the fight I beat him uh, on takedowns but where he bet me was jiu jitsu he was able to counter me and roll me over and stuff and he's very good at just staying top half guard now he didn't do much when he was there but he was able to so that's where I uh, I lost that fight and since then I've just been in the gi three times a week three four times a week sometimes competing winning Irish Opens winning gold in Irish Opens in the, in, in the gi who knew taught it and um, that was really one area that I tried to work on so I was doing loads of that before I fought Marco and I went in there like kind of I suppose with a bit of a grappling mindset and then he boxed the face off me so um, <laughs> You know, it's it's a constant. You're you're trying to fix this, fix that, fix that. And I, I do believe that it will eventually catch up. Evidence shows that that it will. Um, but it is there's definitely a big learning curve there. So I would say the first fight with Jiu-Jitsu, second fight I think I, di I didn't do obvious stuff in stand up that I should have done, like keeping my distance, throwing a jab out, uh, straight attacks. I kind of invited him in with it with a outside leg kick, and it was just stupid to be honest. But it won't happen again. Finally, uh, where do you see yourself at the end of uh, maybe 2018? Well, like, what are your goals? 2018. Well, I've already talked about this year. I, I would love to finish this year as four and two. Like you said, I'm two and two right now. So for me, finishing year four and two would be a big achievement. Um, I'm on like I, I do have another fight in Brave, and I want to also want to say thank you to them for letting me fight on this Bama card because they didn't have to, um, but they let me fight close to home. They understood it was important to me. Um, I want to be four and two within this year. Next year, I'm looking at Bellator to be honest. Um, now, Brave could offer me something really good if I if I do end up performing for them and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, but the way I think the way the culture is going now, I'm leaning more towards Bellator. Um, and sure, look, they're going back. They're coming back to London towards the end of the year. So who's to say I can't I can't fight on it then? Like, do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm I'm leaning more towards them. Um, just because I, I see the way they're treating their fighters and stuff. I hear, you hear so much shit about the UFC now. And uh, I don't know, would you work for someone who you hated? You know, I think it's like a, a kind of an obvious decision. I'd rather like the people I work for and like the environment and stuff. James says great things about them. Everyone else says great things about them. Brian loves them, you know. So I'm looking at that. I, but I think, I think I'll think i be in the top ranks by, by the end of 2018 for sure. But just keep making the right choices and keep doing what I'm doing. Just showing up and turning up every day. Uh, Thanks a million for the interview. Talk to you soon.